life is tough. Everybody say life is tough. Yep. Life is tough. Roxanne just came before me and said life is tough. Life is tough, but God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Life is tough. God is good. Life is tough. God is good. Life is tough. Life is tough. This it's 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 it takes a lot of work. It, it's not easy. It takes a lot of effort. Yeah. Amen. For each of us to come together. Some playing a banjo. Some playing a piano. Some playing a harmonica. Some playing drums. We're all different. Amen. And it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of diligence. It takes a lot of brokenness and humility for you and I to come together. Amen. We have to learn to come together because together we're better. Amen. How many like this Brad up here with a guitar? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a better. There's something better. With all of us together, flowing and hard. There's something better. Amen. Listen, Rob and Rob is great. Amen. He is a great man, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. But he is better with his wife, Kim. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. together better with this group, amen, with this body of Christ. We together are better, we're stronger, amen. amen. We're making a difference. Why? Because we're being unified. Amen. I can't tell you, when I joined the Marine Corps, I did not, I did not understand how many hours I would be out on that parade deck, marching, <laughs> marching. I did not understand how many hours how many hours I would be out there, not only marching myself, but about 50 to 100 other guys. Why were they marching? So that we could practice and work together how to, how to march in unison together. This took a lot of work. It took a lot of effort. It took a lot of humility. Amen? Some people are marching off step, and it, 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 it's nasty. It when you're out of sync doing your own thing, you stand out. And the only thing you can do is you better humble yourself, you better break in your heart and not get too far out of rank, because getting too far out of rank, you're, you're going to get booted out and wrinkled. You're going to get booted out. But if you humble yourself and you say, wow, I can do this, and start to march in rank, amen, to march in unison, it is a glorious thing when you see some of these military forces, when they're marching in rank, it's a powerful thing. Amen. When you and I together, this is where I want to welcome you again to Konania Church. God is developing and growing a church. And we're learning how, as a church, to march together. Amen. Did I get an amen? Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we're learning how to humble ourselves and stay in step with our God. Who is more, he's going forward and with our brothers and sisters. And right here, I'm here to tell you that we are going forward. We're not going backwards, amen. amen. We're not gonna break breaks. We're not gonna, we're not getting kicked out, amen. amen. We're gonna go forward and we're gonna go forward by you and I becoming of one mind, of one accord, learning God's will and going forward in this march that he has us on. Amen. amen. And I guarantee you when that day comes, and it is it's coming, we're we're seeing it. It's a glorious day. It's a neat day when you and I are functioning together. Because there's going to be power. There's going to be life. The Holy Spirit will be able to use us. How many know that the Lord loves unity? It is a good thing when the brothers dwell together in unity. For there the Lord is. His presence will be. There will be an anointing that will flow like never before through our lives. How about in any marriage? Amen. When you're in together with your mate, when there's unity, there's power. Amen. Amen. This is the anointing that I'm after, and I believe you're here because you want more of God. How many want more of God? Yes. So we're learning to, to, to follow after Him. We're learning simply to love Him with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind this morning. I've been talking about here as believers, we're going through a baptism. Amen. We're going through a baptism of death. We're going through a baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. 
Why, Brad, are we going through this? The answer is simply to purify us. Everybody say to purify. Purify. God wants a holy people set apart unto him, so he is purifying you. It's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. We, as followers of Jesus, are called to go through many trials. We're called to go through many persecutions. We're called to go through, through sufferings we talked about last week. Was anybody here last week? Yes. Who can tell me why we go through these trials, these persecutions, and these sufferings? Why? It's going to be holy. That's a good one. Who said that? Can't I took you got a good woman there, Rob. <laughs> we go through trials, we go through persecution, so that you and I might be considered worthy of the kingdom of God. We looked at 2 Thessalonians 1.5, it says, so that we will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which indeed you are suffering. <clears throat> There's an element that we're, of suffering that you and I are called to go through. What does the word worthy mean? Does anybody remember what worthy means? Somebody please tell me. We're proving ourselves worthy. Or if I show up to boot camp on the large side and I can't run three miles and I can hardly do a push-up, if I can hardly do you know, a pull-up, if I can't fire my M16 rifle, I am unfit for the Marine Corps. And I have to learn to get fit. Amen? God is coming back for a holy people. He's coming back for a people that are fit. Amen? Fit for His kingdom. This is what it means to become worthy of the kingdom of God. Again, are we working for our salvation? No. No, we're not working on our salvation. Working for our salvation. But in our salvation, the Bible says to work it out in fear and in trembling. That's what the Amen. Bible says. Amen. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And so you and I are learning to, to simply surrender our lives or simply learning to give everything that we are, everything that we have, unto Him Amen. and for Him and for His purposes. Amen? And as we do that, the Bible says you are going to be considered worthy or fit, fit for His kingdom, Fit for his work. How many want to be fit for the work of the Lord? Some of us are out of shape. I'm, an out, of, I'm out of shape in, in some areas of my life. God wants me to get fit so I can become <coughs> worthy of the kingdom of God, so that I can become a usable person, a usable vessel for him. God wants to make this church a usable vessel for him and for his purposes. Amen? Amen. So you and I, I want, to, I want to invite you as a church, welcome to boot camp, your spiritual boot camp. <laughs> Amen? You have enlisted in God's army. Yep. Amen? Amen? Some of you are looking at old mind. This guy's awesome. <laughs> Some of you got the spot, you understand. We're here to minister healing. We're here to minister God's love. We're here to minister the grace of God. We're here to yeah. minister forgiveness. Amen? Amen. We're here to give you everything that you need, but for a reason. God doesn't expect you to stay an infant for the next 30 years of your life. He expects you to grow. He expects you, amen, to receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness so you'll stand up and be a man and a woman of God so that we would stand up as a church and become a mighty army for Him. Amen. So we read in the book of Hebrews last week, Hebrews chapter 12, if we are the children of God... What will demonstrate that we're children of God according to Hebrews? We'll be a disciplined people. We'll be a disciplined people. A Christian, a believer in Jesus, in our discipline, amen, we are turning away from our sin. We're turning away from everything, from the flesh, from anything standing in our way of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And now you and I, in our discipline, we're learning to obey the will of God from our heart, a heart of love and a heart of devotion to, to the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. And in doing the will of God, you and I are going to bear forth fruit and so prove ourselves followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
How many know Jesus said, if you have love in your heart, if the love is in your heart for one another, you will prove that you belong to me by having love in our heart, one for, no, for one another. An effective army is a disciplined army this morning. It's a disciplined body of soldiers. An effective church is a disciplined body of believers. I believe the Lord has caused us, is calling us to go forward and expand and extend His kingdom by you and I coming together and taking serious the commands of our commanding officer, Jesus Christ, who has commanded you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He has commanded you and I to make disciples of all the nations. Amen. Here at Conania Church, that vision is simply, we're here to develop people into fully functioning followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're here as a church with a vision to see lost people saved. Everybody say, we're here to see lost people saved. That's going to take some effort on our behalf. Amen. All of us got to go out. We got to win somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ and bring them in. That's our purpose. In order to fulfill our purpose, we've got to be disciplined. We've got to get rid of some stuff that, that is hindering us. And we've got to say yes to God and begin to get out on the streets again. I've got to do that myself, guys. And we're also here to cause renewal and revival amongst God's people. How many you know God's people need to be renewed? They need to be revived. How are they going to be renewed and revived? They're going to be renewed and revived through you, God's people, that are experiencing His grace and His mercy. You're alive in Him. And when your fellow brother comes through the door beaten up or boogered up, however you want, he's messed up, he's got some sin. How many know we as Christians got some sin on our lives? We've got some areas we're messed up. Amen? And when we come into the house of God, you and I have to be disciplined to not beat them up further. Because we like to do that. We love to beat people up, thinking, oh, you're a no good son of a gun. Where you been? You've been doing that. You're, you're bad, 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 bad. Guilt, condemnation, shame. You and I, as God's people, we've got to be disciplined in order to recognize those that are coming to the door. Hold our tongue. Be real careful about what you say. Bring them into the house of God and then begin to encourage. How many need some encouragement yourself? I hope you're coming because you're getting some encouragement. Amen? Yes. I'm a, I'm a former Marine. I believe in discipline. Amen? I had to kick somebody out Wednesday night. We were here Wednesday night for a class. I had to enforce discipline. Somebody came in. They weren't invited to come in. Wow, this is going to sound really kind of, this is really Except <laughs> 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 The fact is, there's a time for discipline. Yeah. Amen? This was a time for discipline. And I had to say, listen, you can either abide by the standard that we have here. You can sit here and your two little kids are going to take care. They can go in the back. Yeah. And they refuse to do that. They were obnoxious, they were loud, they were distracting. And so at that point, I had to say, listen, I am very sorry, but you are going to have to go because this really is just a closed class, okay? And we were ministering in order to develop a ministry team for the future of this church. Amen. If you want to come back, you can come back during coffee house hours. I would be glad to minister to you. If you're interested in coming with the right motive, come on in. I will be glad to sit with you. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I don't want that to sound. There's a time to love and accept, and that's what we're doing as a church. Amen. I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that you're already in trouble. We're loving. God disciplines those who He loves. loves. Amen. So there's a place for discipline in our lives, but there's a time when people come in broken. When you and I, as a church family, if somebody, this is a different scenario here this morning, isn't it? If somebody came through that door, amen, we would welcome them. You see them, they're broken, they're in tears, they got some issues. They're, just, they're broken for God. You come right inside here. We love you, we care for you, God loves for you. And we're going to minister to that person, amen? That's the kind of people that we need to be. Okay, I'm going to get back to my notes here. <laughs> I'm going somewhere this morning, I promise you. Listen, in order for you and I to go forward and take some more territory, 
we're here to take some more territory as, as God's people. We have to be a disciplined church body. We have to be prepared. We have to be ready. We have to be fit. Otherwise, you and I won't make it. There were some people, there was this big mountain in boot camp. I won't tell you the name of it, but it was a monstrous, monstrous uh, mountain that some people did not make it. They weren't prepared. They weren't fit. And they give in. They gave in and they dropped out. And if you don't want to prepare yourself, if you don't want to get yourself ready, if you don't want to get your fit, get yourself fit, I'm here to tell you, you might not make it. Because the battle is going to get very difficult as we go forward in this world. The spiritual dynamic, the spiritual warfare that you and I are in of the flesh and the spirit. Amen. The kingdom of God versus the kingdom of darkness. These two are really butting heads. They, it is a war. And the devil who comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He is a deceiver. He is very crafty. He is taking people out left and right. Why? Because they're not spiritually fit. In their minds, in their hearts, in their bodies, all of us, our whole being has to be spiritually fit in order to go forward with what God has for us. Amen. Turn over to 2 Peter this morning. You and I have to be unified together of one accord or we won't make it for this next step. But we will make it if we will become a disciplined people of great faith and great character. Everybody say great faith. Great, faith. great, great character. Great character. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter. You guys getting anything so far? <laughs> I'm working on it here. I'm going to get you something. Believe me, something's going to speak to you this morning. Second Peter chapter 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant of, a, of the apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received the faith of the same kind as ours, by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Seeing that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Amen. His divine life, God's divine life has granted for you and I everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of Him who has called us by His own glory and excellence. For by these He has granted to us His precious and magnificent promises. That's what the Bible is all about. They are precious and they are magnificent promises to you as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. By them, we're becoming partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. You and I have to escape from the corruption of the world. Okay? And be transformed into the very nature of God. Verse 5, now for this very reason, also apply all diligence, and in your faith supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence knowledge, in your knowledge <coughs> self-control, in your self-control perseverance. These are hard things, aren't they? They're hard things here. But these are the qualities that God wants you and I to work towards. And as we work towards these qualities, there's going to be some great benefits that will come to you. There's great benefits for going along and, and being disciplined in the Marine Corps. They will take care of you. And you will get some rank. You will have a pay increase. You'll have better benefits. Amen. You'll be able to travel the world. You'll be able to do some cool things as you allow yourself to be disciplined by the military. God will allow some things to happen in your life and our life as a church as we will cultivate these characteristics that the Bible are talking about, is talking about here. In your perseverance, godliness. Remember Paul told, told, told Timothy, what? Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness. In your brotherly kindness, love. Listen to verse 8 this morning. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, everybody say increasing, increasing. they belong to me, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God's saying, if you will cultivate these characteristics, you won't be useless, you'll be useful. How many want to be useful for God? 
God has a church here for a reason, guys. It's not to just sing kumbaya and have a little, little, little social club. Amen. God has a church in the earth for a reason and for a purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. For he who lacks, thank you, for he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purifications from his former sins. In other words, they don't know what their purpose is. They don't know what they're doing in the church. They don't know why they belong to God. They don't know why they're going to church. They have no reason. Therefore, they, don't for, they forget about the cross. They forget about the call, and they go back into the world to do whatever they want. Therefore, brethren, be all the more... Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. He's chosen you. For as long as you practice these things, listen to this promise, you will never stumble. You will Man. never fall. How many, got, how many got some areas that we would fall in? My hand's lifted high. I got some areas still. What does that mean? That means, Brad, you haven't lived up to what God's... You're still lacking in some character. That's why you stumble. That's what you fall. But the Bible says here, if we will practice these things, we will never stumble. You will never fall. How many need some work here this morning? Amen. Come on now. All of us. All of us got some work to do here. And in this way, verse 11, in this way, the entrance... Into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior will be what? It will be abundantly supplied unto you. So what, what Peter's saying here is that, listen, if we will learn, if we will give ourselves to the purposes of God, if we will mature and will grow and will get fit for Him, the, the, the entrance into the God's kingdom will be abundantly supplied to you. What is he saying? Just ask whatever you want, church. Ask what, whatever you want. That's what Jesus said. And it will be done unto you. Amen. If we will walk in his will and know his heart and do whatever he says to do, it will be done. It will be done. Man, that's good news. Yes. You and I are here to be fruitful for God. And we'll be fruitful for God as we develop God's character in our life. Again, it takes real discipline and character to have a glorious church. Just like it takes a lot of character and discipline to have a beautiful and fruitful marriage. Amen? You can't have a beautiful marriage without discipline. I don't care how good looking you are. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what kind of job you have. I don't care what you got going on in the natural. Without the character of Christ and without discipline, your marriage will not make it. Amen. <clears throat> you can't have a marriage without discipline. You can't have a church without discipline. The enemy is real this morning. His schemes and his deceptions are real. The church has to come alive in the purposes of God. And we have to become a disciplined body of people that will allow his character to begin to reign in our life. And that character, again, it will produce. The character will produce the life of God. And in producing the life of God, it will naturally grow. It will naturally grow. We are here to grow in the things of God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, through faith and through patience, we inherit the kingdom of God or the promises of God. Amen. There's we inherit when you inherit, you're growing in Christ. Amen. You're growing in his purposes. You're growing in his kingdom. Also, Galatians 6, 9, I want to encourage you through that. It says, it says, not to lose heart. Let me just read it. Somebody hang on to this this morning. This has come into my spirit so many times through the years when, when you feel like life is really tough. Amen. When it gets real, real hard. Galatians 6, 
verse 9, it says, let us not lose heart in doing good. Some Christians I know of are losing heart. Because character and being out on that, on that uh, parade deck day after day, it gets hard. To get in that gym day after day, and then it gets hard. It gets tough. To get out on those streets, butch, week after week after week, it gets hard, doesn't it? It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of diligence. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of discipline, doesn't it? And sometimes you and I can just throw the dream away if we're not careful. The Bible says, don't lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. Amen? Don't grow tired. Joshua and Caleb this morning, they were fit for the kingdom of God. They had character. Amen? They believed God, and they went in, and they possessed the land that God had for them. How about the other ten? There were twelve spies. Two went in, and the other ten, what happened to them? They died in the wilderness. Why did they die in the wilderness? Because they weren't fit. Do you understand where I'm going with you this yes, morning? Amen. amen. Do you understand the call? Do you understand the call to really become, as God's church, we've got to prove <coughs> ourselves as followers. How do we prove ourselves? We're going to be a disciplined life. We're going to get fit for the kingdom of God. And being fit for the kingdom of God, we're going to bear forth fruit for God. And we're going to go forward and become the church that God wants us to become. Because the alternative is to die in the wilderness. I do not believe in once saved, always saved. I believe that you get saved, you live saved, you stay saved. Amen? Amen. You stay saved, you live saved. Yes. By living in the fear of the Lord always. By departing from evil and learning to do what is good. Yes. And it's only by these characters that we can go on and have a great marriage great church. We can turn this nation around. Yes. Amen? Amen. That's right. Amen. There's always hope in Jesus if we'll put our trust in right. Jesus Christ. Amen. The people that fell in the wilderness, they simply, they, they weren't fit. They fell short in unbelief. <clears throat> the promised land was only achieved and experienced as we walk by faith and not by sight. I want to call you to a greater faith this morning. In order to go forward, you and I cannot walk by sight. I cannot walk by sight anymore. I cannot walk by my own understanding. I cannot walk according to the circumstances and the natural. I have to learn to walk by faith in what God has said in His Word. If God says in His Word, He will bring it to pass. And my job is to simply obey Him. That takes faith. It takes obedience. Amen? To walk by faith is to root ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is to root ourselves in His Word. And it is to root ourselves in His purposes this morning. To walk by sight is to drift away. Yes. <clears throat> I want to know God's purpose and call for your life. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you something. Are you getting closer to that purpose through faith and through patience? Or have you allowed the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy to allow you to drift away from God's purposes for your life? Which one are you this morning? Because you're one or the other. If you've drifted away, God can meet you right here, right here this morning and say, God, I have drifted away. There was a call once on my life. I have drifted away. I began to walk by the natural. I began to walk by my circumstances. I'm paying attention to myself. I'm paying, to I'm paying attention to the world. I'm paying attention to the enemy. And I've drifted off course. And I'm here to admit it this morning. It's okay to say, I've drifted off course. You're in the right spot. Yes. God welcomes anybody that would have have the obedience and have a humble heart to say, I've drifted off course and God, I'm here to get back on course. Amen. God will restore you. He will revive you. He will encourage you and you can get back on your feet better and stronger than when you first began. Right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> don't allow the devil to steal, kill, and destroy. We as a church family this morning don't allow we're not going to allow the devil to steal, kill, and destroy our God-given promised land that he has for us. It's a good land. Yeah. But we do have to execute diligence and grow character in our life. 
Jesus came to what? He came to give us life and have it, have it abundantly. God expects you and I to walk by faith. And by faith, we believe what God has said to us. And by faith, we develop character. And through character, the entrance into the kingdom of God is, ab is abundantly provided unto us. Amen? Can I get an amen? Does anybody understand? Amen. Can you hear that this morning? We walk by faith. And faith, by faith, we develop character. And through character, the entrance into the kingdom is abundantly supplied to you and I. How many know God gives us things and entrust things to you and I. He entrusts you with a job. He entrusts you with a car. He entrusts you with a house. He entrusts you with a marriage. He entrusts you with a church. Amen. And it's not for us to use and abuse. But it's for us to be a steward. And to act and be responsible people, amen? We're here to cultivate faithfulness, a right stewardship over everything that God has given us. And becoming a proper steward, we're going to bear fruit. How many believe that we have been a proper steward over this old beat-up Circle K building that we got 10 years ago? Yeah. I believe we have. Have we been perfect? No, no, no. Have Brad, Pastor Brad made some mistakes? <clears throat> a lot of them. I believe that we have been diligent to stay on course, and I believe through character, amen, some hard work and some diligence, this place is coming alive. We're bearing forth more fruit than ever before, amen. This place is growing. How many know it's through faith and patience? It's taking 10 years, amen. Some people, they come in and say, man, if you do this, just one, two, three, you should be 500 people by now. Yeah. I've got a hard time with that. Yeah. Yeah. We're called to be who are, we're called to be. You're called who you're called to be. And I guarantee you, God has you in the palm of his hand. And he has love for you. He is walking you through life. And he is training you. He's equipping you. He is empowering you. And I guarantee you, it's going to take a little bit of time. You're in a process, I'm in a process. It's taken 10 years for Pastor Brad to get out of his little selfishness and a little more into God's goodness. Amen? Amen. It takes time. That's why the Bible says be patient with one another. If you're not patient, you're able to destroy the work of God. God gives us things so that we would be a right steward. We would be faithful over him. Let's read out of Matthew 25 this morning. This is the main point of my message here this morning. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. We're familiar with this. But I pray this morning that God would speak to every single one of us regarding what He has given you, the gifts, the talents that He has given you, that this, God, I pray right now, Lord, just for a revelation in all of our hearts as we read these scriptures, Lord, that you would speak to every individual, every marriage, every family, this church, Lord God, speak to me this morning. And allow this parable to come to life and show me how I need to become a better steward of what you've given me, God. Verse 14, it says, For it is just like a man, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is just like a man about to go on a journey. And he called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. How many know the Lord came to the earth? And then he went back to heaven and he gave gifts to men. Okay? He entrusted people with possessions, with gifts. Verse 15. To the one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. Isn't it cool that none of us, none of us are the same? We're all different. We've all got different abilities, different talents. Amen? Yes. And he went on his journey. Immediately, the one who had received the five talents went 
and traded with them and gained five more talents. So somebody was given five talents and that person immediately, they went out and they used those talents and what did they do? They multiplied, they gained. They were, these guys are gonna be applauded at the end because they took the resources that were entrusted to them and they put them into right action and they actually gained from what was given to them. They produced some fruit. Amen. And in the same manner, the one who had received two talents gained two more. There was a gaining. They took what God gave to them. They invested it. They worked over it. Amen. They labored over it. And then they brought back God, thank you for the gift that you gave me. Here's two more in honor of you and of worship you. I produced from what you gave me. Now, after a long time, oops, verse 18, I can't forget 18. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, how many know it's been a long time? Jesus will come back. He came 2,000 years ago. If, he's, if he tarries, don't lose heart. He will come back. He went on a long journey, but I guarantee you, he's going to come back to this earth sometime real, real soon. Amen? Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came, and he settled accounts with him. How many believe that there is going to be a day of accounting, that you and I will give an account of our lives, of our stewardship, of what God has given us? That's what he's talking about here. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. And his master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. There is, there is reward there, isn't there? There's a great reward for the servant of God who takes his mission in this world and his church serious. Serious enough to now cultivate character. Serious enough to now employ himself as God's servant and actually bearing fruit for God. There will be a great reward for you. Also, the one who had received two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents with me. See, I have gained two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 24. And the one also who had received one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid. And I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See what you have. Or see, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has, more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But the one who does not have, even what he does have, will be what? Taken away. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness in that place that will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So here we have a call. It's a powerful uh, a parable. For you and I, this is the Lord speaking to you and I, and He's telling you and I, listen, I have given you certain gifts. I have given you certain talents. Some of you got great talent. Some of you have been given more. How many know when you when you've got a lot, you're even more accountable? Some of us wish if I just had ten million dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> listen, those guys that have Boop your bucks like that, $10 million, and they're squandering it yeah. on, their, on, their, on their licentiousness, on their houses and cars and boats and more and more and more and more and more. There will be a day of reckoning for that person. If you have more, you're accountable. You're responsible for, to the Lord, to invest what you have been given for His kingdom. 
Amen. Everything that you have been given, it belongs to the Lord this morning. This is what real stewardship is all about. This is what it really means to be a faithful servant of God. All that I have all that you have given, Lord, it belongs to you. And even though you have increased it by becoming a faithful servant, it all belongs to the Lord. Amen. How many know we're getting more things so we can just invest it right back into the kingdom. Amen. And become more and more fruitful for the kingdom of God. It's not about us. It's about him. As we read in offering, it's not about storing up things on earth as much as it is about storing things up in heavenly places, in the heaven, amen, where it will be there for you for all eternity. But the people that produced, they knew God to be a good God. Get this this morning. They knew God to be a good God. They had a good land, that he had a good land for them, and they were willing to invest their lives, amen, and God came back and rewarded them. Now listen to the other thought. The other thought was, I knew you to be a harsh master. Well, where does that come from? It comes from the devil. Where does the Bible say that, bad is, that God is a bad God? Where does it say that he's a hard God? My Bible says he's a loving God. He's a kind God. He's a compassionate God. He is a good God, and He has set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. He says, you choose. You can choose to believe that God is good. God, you've given me a life. You've given me gifts and talents. And now, because you're good, I'm going to invest those back, and I believe I'm going to have a good reward one of these days. Or you can allow the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy by deceiving you to thinking that God is bad, that God wants to hurt you, God wants to abuse you, He's out to rob you, and that's the state of many Christians in our world today, they don't simply give up their lives, they don't further the call of God, because deep down in their heart, they don't believe that God is good. We've got to dispel that. What happened to that person? What he did have, it was what? Taken away, and it was given to somebody who was bearing forth the fruit, stewarding in a right fashion. Do we hear the call this morning? Yes. Tough, isn't it? They say, Pastor Brad loves me. More than that, Jesus loves me. Amen. Jesus loves me. He is on my side. And I know He's speaking to you right here, right now. Amen. And the only thing we can do when God speaks is to say, God, I have been unfaithful. God, I haven't used the resources. I haven't used my time. I haven't used my talents in a right way. But this morning, what did he say this morning? This morning. I want to get it right. I want to get it right. I want to get it right. I want to get right with my God. I want to surrender. Remember, it's about brokenness. Don't fight God anymore. Don't resist God any, anymore. I'm preaching to myself, Brad, you can't afford to resist God anymore. You cannot afford to not believe that if you will obey Him, that He will take you into another land filled with milk and honey, yes. and you will bear forth fruit. Yes. How many know we're getting ready to cross over into Amen. another land? Amen. We're down April 3rd. We have a closing at a new building. I believe that God wants us to produce fruit. I believe with all my heart, guys, that we have been faithful over this place. We're going to continue to be faithful and steward it so that it produces fruit. But I believe that the God is calling us to produce more fruit. And there is another place that we can do that. Amen? Amen. I'm not here to just, just, you know, earn my retirement, guys. I'm not here to just do a little job and get away with becoming a pastor and just... Just, just, just doing that. You know my heart. I don't want to just pastor and just call it good. Well, it was good. You know, I spent 30 years pastoring. It was, it was. I, I, I do value that. But there's more. I believe. I believe that God expects more from me, and I, I believe that God has blessed you with. How many would say this morning God has blessed me with some wonderful things? Yes. I am a blessed man. Amen. But do you feel in your heart that God wants you to just get complacent, and just stop, and just you know, check? I'm just going to check yeah. out the Hawaii and sit, spend the next 30 years on the beach and eat macadamia nuts and <laughs> some cold lemonade and just chill out. <laughs> a lot of people do that. 
They'll sit there and, oh, God has blessed me. And I'm just so blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed. Now, is it right to take a vacation? Absolutely. You take a vacation and you enjoy that. Is it right to get a good night's sleep? Absolutely. God wants good things for his people. He Amen. wants us to enjoy all things the Bible says. But he has given us all things so that you and I might become fruitful and, and utilize our time on earth in a fruitful way so that we can store up, amen, treasures in heaven for all eternity. Hawaii's beach is ain't going to compare to heaven's beach. Amen. 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 <laughs> I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know it is going to be good, 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 good. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day. Because I'm looking forward to that day. I'm ready to work hard. I'm ready to take this next step. So where I was going with this whole building thing is we're still kind of working out some details. We bought this building for $280,000 back in 10 years ago, June 2, 2015. That was a big step for me. This next building is going to cost us about $750,000. It's a big step. When I say, I you know, think that's a big step. Yeah. Big step. Yeah. Some, some of the business guys out there, they, you know, that's no, Brad, that's nothing. You know, they're used to, you know, 10 million, 20 million, you know, lots of money. They, they've been through that. I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little guy. Just a little guy. We got any millionaires in here? <laughs> we got a big guy. We're just little guys. We got yeah. Jesus. But God is using us. The humble, the broken, amen? That's what he says in 1 Corinthians, amen? To the weak, the things that are not the base things of the world, amen? To shame those of the world that don't, that don't know God. God wants to use a humble people here this morning that will simply act out of obedience. And he says, go into that land, possess it, amen? I will be with you and I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. Is it going to be big? Yeah, it's going to be big. Is it going to be scary? Everybody say, yeah, it's going to be scary. Yeah, it's going to be scary. I need you to come alongside and hold my hand. Brad, it's okay. I know you're a little scared. I'll take my hand. But I, before, you know, we've already signed on the dotted line. That's been done, okay? But when it comes to showing up with the money, we put down $14,000 as earnest money. But $750,000, Lord, where's that going to come? I'm scared, Lord. I'm scared. And so I'm going to be calling upon you. I'm scared. Pastor Brad is scared. But I'm not going to allow being scared to keep me away from going forward with what God has called me to do. I'm going to walk in faith and I'm going to walk in obedience. And I'm going to see what God does. Amen. I need a few good people right alongside the vision to say, I am going forward in this vision. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we done? <laughs> no. Never done. In closing, Proverbs 29, 18, it says, Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. But happy are those that keep the law. We've got to have some boundaries to keep us going down the right path. Amen. I mean, you know boundaries are good. If you don't have a, a vision where you're going, you can go unrestrained and start just doing whatever. Okay? Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, it says, record the vision and inscribe it on talents that the one on tablets that the one who reads it may run. God wants you and I to run, and so we have a vision that is written on a tablet for you and I. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens towards the goal. It will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come, and it will not delay. Amen? This church, we're here to continue to serve in every way possible to see that the gospel of Jesus Christ goes forth out into this community in a great way. We've done some things. We've got some more work to do. We've got to continue uh, with our purposes to evangelize, to continue our worship. Amen. I'm dedicated to this worship team that, again, through worship, people will get saved and encounter 
God and through worship, people will be edified, encouraged, they'll be renewed in their faith. We've got, we've got some more worship to do. We've got fellowship to happen. Amen. Stick around and fellowship afterwards. I want all of you to begin to cultivate fellowship, koinonia, one with one another so that we can encourage each other. We need further discipleship. We need further home groups going on. Amen. We need some more work going on in the house of God. We need further ministry going on. Amen. But it all takes hard work. It all takes discipline. So I'm going to call us to that this morning. As we pray, and we'll go out. Thank you, Lord. So Father, I just thank you for this morning. Lord, we just start by saying, God, you have given us so very much, God. We are so <coughs> blessed by, you. Lord, our health this morning. God, you have you've given us strong, strong bodies. You've given us a mind to think. You've given us a spirit to serve you. God, you've given us finances, Lord God. You've given us food to eat. You've given us clothes to wear. You've given us a building to meet in and to assemble in, Lord God. Lord, you have been so good and we just honor you. We worship you and we want to become obedient. And I pray, Lord God, in all of our lives here this morning that as we spoke about the parable of the talents, Lord, each of us, you would show each of us, Lord, who we are. Father, the gifts that you have placed inside of each of us. Lord, what you have given unto us. God, I pray right now that people would have a revelation of who they are, what they have been given. And then back in response to a good God, I pray, Lord God, that we would, you would give us just a plan, a vision in our own heart, how we can... Just begin to invest further our lives and our talents, everything that we are, for your kingdom, Lord God, that we would produce and we would gain more by investing our lives. I pray that for every single one of us. And as a church family, Lord God, we just declare this morning that in faith we are going forward with your purposes, Lord God. And in faith, we're going to employ our side, ourselves to labor over into this new place to see your kingdom come and your will be done. And we thank you that we're going to gain more ground for your kingdom. We're going to see souls saved. We're going to see the saints encouraged. And we're going to see a mighty revival.